Uh, but you know, there is no fear right now. Okay, not yet. The, the fear kicks in a little bit later. Fear kicks in if we lose the 50-day moving average on the Qs. Now, why is that a big deal? Because if you remember, when we lost the 50-day moving average here, you had three, four days. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Let's talk about the market. So uh, down, down uh, 300 points today. Uh, you had the S&P, uh, the NASDAQ 100, uh, down about a half a percent. Okay, uh, you know, slowly but surely, we're, we're making our way uh, down to levels that bulls kind of need to reset. I, I, again, I could have easily started this, uh, you know, started this webcast here of, well, the market's going lower, it's going to go lower, you're going to see more. That's what it's looking, right? Definitely looking that way. We're heading down to the 50 day moving average. You can see here, you know, four days in a row without, you know, putting fear monger or anything. Else. This is kind of the facts. You know, you have four days in a row uh, rejected back into supply and spies are rolling over. And you can see here where we, you know, we, where we're talking about this 141, uh, 142 kind of soft landing here uh, for the spies. And what you, you've been seeing now over the last several days is slowly but surely. A lot of groups, uh, you know, getting weak. Uh, you start seeing now the financials, right? Financials are getting uh, weaker as well. You got Goldman Sachs, literally about a day away from really cracking down. Uh, if you look at names uh, like Citibank, right, just held the bottom of the range here for now. Uh, J.P. Morgan uh, held the bottom of the range for now. You have casino names uh, cracking as well. You saw the news coming out of uh, the Macau area. Uh, they got hit. They all got hit today. The Las Vegas Sands win uh, one by one, right? One by one. Penn uh, got hit again. You have this. You have this variant. It's aggressive. Uh, again, as much as you know, you could be stubborn and say, "Look, I don't care about this. I don't care about that." It's real, right? This thing is real. People are getting sick. People are dying. And the moral of the story is, these stocks are are getting hit. Uh, the one group that was holding on. And still holding on for now are the NASDAQ 100, right? Just for now are the QQQs. But we are a day away from, well, testing the bottom of the range. If you look at the low of yesterday and the low of today, they're pretty much within a nickel of each other. So this, you know, this whole area here, this rising 20-day support is kind of a big deal going into tomorrow's session. And the one thing that we've been seeing now for about a week or so, and you can see here by illustration by the cues itself, we're down one, two, three, four days in a row of lower highs and lower lows. That's a kind of a big deal. It's kind of mirroring the, the, the S&P. The only difference is you're not having a whole broad sell-off yet in the NASDAQ 100 names, but you're starting to see one by one uh, they're getting hit. Little by little, they're getting hit. And the longer the spies and the longer the queues stay below supply, well, that opens up a whole, uh, a whole uh, myriad of potential problems if you are playing on the long side and the long side only. Now, again, is there any fear? I don't think so, right? I, we saw a lot of names go down. We'll get to the individual pivots in a second. There's some, you know, some several names to the upside as well. Uh, but yeah, there is no fear right now. Okay, not yet. The, the fear kicks in a little bit later. The fear kicks in if we lose the 50-day moving average on the queues. Now, why is that a big deal? Because if you remember, when we lost the 50-day moving average here, you had three, four days of really aggressive selling and really major rug pulls in a lot of names. So the 50-day moving average is going to be kind of a big deal if we start losing the 20 day moving average here, because again, like I said in yesterday's video and the day before, if you believe in the theory that stocks go from supply to supply, then you have to believe in the theory that stocks go from demand to demand to demand, which is ultimately uh, the 160, uh, the 368 area uh, of the QQQs. Now, again, like I said a couple of days ago, you're not gonna get this big reaction uh, in a lot of names because a lot of names are still way above uh, their demand zone. But the longer we stay below supply, they're going to start catching up. And if you look at today's action, yeah, you know, you had some names that we talked about uh, yesterday, right? We talked about yesterday that were taking out uh, earnings lows. Uh, the first one we basically 
to talk about was Zoom, right? We talked about Zoom. I said in last night's video, I go, look, look, you know, this is just for a trade, right? Don't, you know, this, is, this isn't this is anything personal. But the moral of the story is when, you, when your stock blows up on earnings, and again, call it what you want, but when a stock blows up on earnings and then it retests its earnings lows and it confirms earnings low, it usually does start uh, several days, if not a week, uh, worth of selling pressure and today was the first day again we talked about this on last night's video and now zoom has room all the way down to this 273 maybe even 269 the bottom of this range a name that we talked about uh yesterday right yesterday dollar tree had exactly the same thing the stock blew up in earnings uh, rallied a little bit and once it took out the earnings low it's starting a three-day selling cycle again has room uh, all the way down to 83 and change if the market continues to kind of bleed now if there's any more aggression you're going to start things uh start things are going to start to accelerate uh very very aggressively but then we started seeing more names getting pulled and again you know look at netflix right netflix we talked about yesterday we talked about how important that 10-day moving averages netflix took out the area again netflix looks like a like a beeline right like it looks like a a, a a soft landing spot around that 568 area uh you have names like an amc that had a big run-up right really really big run-up and again i, I have no dog in this fight you know, we talked about the pivots to the upside here and the upside here. So there was a nice move to the upside. But again, here it is right back to the 10-day moving average. If you guys remember how important the 10-day moving average is, all you have to do is reference Tesla. If you guys remember, Tesla stopped at the 10-day moving average. The next day it broke it, right? And look what happened to the stock. If you look at AMC for tomorrow, right? Same thing, right? You have AMC. It hit the 10-day moving average the last three times it held the 10-day moving average. But tomorrow, if this thing confirms, well, it has another three, four, five dollars to the downside as well. So there's a lot more value to the downside. I mean, there's, I mean, that, that, that goes without saying. Are there names that are, you know, pretty strong? Sure. Like Tesla, uh, we had a pivot today on Tesla. We talked about yesterday's recovery and reclaimed the five-day moving average. It actually had a perfect run uh, into its top of supply, which again, we'll talk about in a second. But the point is, if you look at the majority of names they're going to be value to the short side. And again, until we test the 50 day moving average on both the spies, right? Both the spies uh, and or the queues, right? And or the queues, you're just gonna have a lot of slow bleeding days on a lot of names because a lot of names are getting rejected constantly at supply. So I'll give you a perfect example. So here is a name, NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA has been getting really, really aggressive call buying for the last two weeks. Every single time there's call buyers, they keep on selling the stock over and over again. So my point is, if you're getting monster call buyers, 20, 25 points out of the money, and you're still being sold, right? You're still being sold into supply. Well, what does that tell you where the sentiment of the market is? Again, this is just using an example. It's nothing to do uh, personally about NVIDIA. And again, if you look at NVIDIA, it held the 20-day moving average, just like the Qs. Now, what happens if the Qs lose the 20-day moving average, right? So what happens when NVIDIA loses the 20-day moving average? So that's kind of my point. There's a lot of names that are looking really, really heavy right now. And if the indexes really turn aggressively and start committing uh, to some really aggressive prices down below, you're going to have individual equities uh, follow through, uh, well, very, very aggressively. Like, look at coin, right? Coin is all over the place, right? Like, again, maybe coin doesn't doesn't confirm tomorrow but look at coin you have this whole bottom channel here right it starts taking down the bottom channel here there's a lot of room down like 200 again i don't think it's going to confirm tomorrow but you never know right look at a name like tdoc right tdoc same group uh same group as uh, zoom look, look at this long base here guys right look at this long long base here look what zoom did right look what zoom did same same group right the stay-at-home stocks if this thing confirms uh, it has a lot of room down as well. And, th and that's kind of my point. I'm just looking for a lot of names that either already underneath supply or couldn't rally uh, in that last move of the upward bias in the market last week. And, and th they're standing out uh, pretty, pretty obvious. I think if you, if you go through the NASDAQ 100, if you go through uh, the members of the SPY, you'll notice uh, casinos, banks, and a lot of technology getting very, very weak. And the point is, if nothing is going up as the market is gapping up, because remember, the market gapped up today. As soon as the market gapped up again in the last three out of four days, 
They came right into it and they sold waves right back to supply and yada, yada, yada. We had a 300 point decline. So going into tomorrow, again, I would love to be wrong, right? I, I, I enjoy a bull market as much as everybody else. But again, this is nothing personal. Again, this is the stock market. We say this every single day and especially for newer traders that are, you know, that are just in their initial uh, learning stages and they, they love a good market and they love the belief of the buy the dip theory. But again, the buy the dip theory only works when stocks are above demand, when stocks are below supply, it's not buy the dip, it's sell, right? It's sell, that's the whole point. You have to know uh, the dynamics where the market structure is as, you're, uh, as you are uh, learning the game. And, and the one thing, unfortunately, a lot of new traders have is emotional baggage. They're very uh, in love and lust uh, with their stocks and, and, and they won't admit uh, that they're technically wrong and maybe they don't know they're technically wrong. And unfortunately, instead of sitting there being proactive, and try to pick the brain of maybe a more experienced trader, they're, you know, they're doing everything in their power to sabotage themselves because they won't admit that they don't have a good grasp of what is going on. And it's not their fault, but the arrogance, right? The arrogance of a trader believing that their position will be okay no matter what is going on in the market structure, that is your fault. And as soon as you let go, right, as soon as you let go, of the, the love factor, the lust factor behind holding a position when it's technically broken, then and only then are you gonna start losing the emotional side of this business and look at it for more of the structural base, more technical base, instead of having an opinion that you want versus the reality that you have. And it's very, very important. So again, everybody has an ego. Uh, everybody believes they are right. They're smarter you know, than everybody else. But again, guys, there's nobody smarter than the market. Uh, my opinion means nothing. Your opinion means nothing. When supply gets confirmed to the upside, stocks go higher. When demand gets confirmed to the downside, stocks go lower. And it doesn't make a difference how much uh, you believe in the company, what's going to happen five years from now. Five years from now is not tomorrow, right? And your job is to proactively, respectfully approach the market in a very humble, right? In a very humble uh, and muted way and let price action dictate the way the market is going to go uh, to its next point. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Again, some longs, some shorts, uh, some swings from yesterday are still playing themselves out. Let's talk about it uh, going into today. Again, we talked about Zoom yesterday, right? And I, I even and I even said, because people are just so emotional about Zoom. I even said in last night's video, I go, listen, if you're, if you're watching this video, it's, uh, last night, I go, you know, there's nothing personal. This thing confirms uh, earnings low. It's going to start, you know, it's going to start a cycle lower. It's just, it, it, it's just common sense. You know, if it takes out a catalyst play and starts building below that level, uh, usually price action is going to follow. Uh, 288 potential swing earnings low if it builds below can flush. Here was Zoom. It goes lower. I, I think it goes lower here. So here's the whole cycle here, 288. I uh, traded down to uh, 281. If this thing confirms today's price action, you still have you know, you still have anywhere eight to twelve dollars in, in the move on Zoom, and if you if you believe in stocks uh, confirming their earnings lows, it's usually a cycle, multiple day cycle of selling. Good job for all you guys who are still in this thing. Uh, FISV uh, 10940 109. If it builds below, it can flush more. You can see the majority of it was all uh, sell bias, and will continue to be sell bias. So uh, here's the 10940 109. Uh, traded down to all the way to 106 and change. Hey, this thing loses. Uh, this 106 area on the close, you're going to have a really, really aggressive move. Again, if, 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 we don't know, but uh, definitely a nice move there on FISV. Tesla, right? The uh, Big recovery yesterday, um, big recovery, nice recovery. Uh, 744, seven is, this, this is only one of the very few uh, upside channels. Uh, 747 is 60 minute supply. It needs to build over it. And Tesla had a nice move, right guys? Really nice move. You had a $7 candle here. Uh, right at the open, here's the 747 supply, right? Here's the 747, the whole channel here is supply. And again, there is no random places the stocks stop, right? Stocks go from supply and look where it stopped perfectly uh, in the 754 level. So again, if, if Tesla maybe confirms back to price action, hey, maybe this will be one of the shining stars to actually uh, go higher, but we don't know. But nice pivot there. Uh, microchip 161 needs to build. What was very impressive about microchip this morning was there was a lot of downgrades. You saw uh, downgrades in LRCX. I believe it was a downgrade in AMAT as well. And Microchip, at least for a short period of time, negated that down, negated the group's 
uh, sell bias and uh, you know went up about about a dollar and a half or so nothing big but again it actually held up pretty well uh, considering a lot of names got sold uh, GameStop obviously never got to this 209 210 ever Marriott right we talked about Marriott last night in the video as well uh, 140 75 141 uh, needs to build smooth move right smooth move on Marriott really really strong move so it took out the 140 75 141 and traded right to the next supply zone of 142 69 this thing still looks higher if this thing can get above uh, 143 it's going to start fit, fitting in a pretty good gap what's really impressive guys think about this what's really impressive what Marriott did today it's the same group as win it's the same group as Las Vegas Sands it's the same group as Penn. So the fact that Marriott uh, actually confirmed today went higher uh, is pretty darn uh, impressive. Um, OCGM never confirmed here. Penn went absolutely nuts. Congratulations for you guys. If you caught it, it was way too thin for me, way too fast. Uh, I missed it. 486 needs to build. Uh, Pan W got an upgrade today, uh, multiple upgrades. So it took out 86 and put up a $10 candle. Look at this move here. Right, let's move here off this 486. Just one nuts. We put up a ten dollar candle. If you got it, great job. I did not. Uh, Netflix again, like I said, they're coming one by one. 582. If it builds below, can flush. I still think the Netflix goes lower. So here is the 582. Right, it took out the 582, traded all the way down to 575. I still think there's like four or five points uh, left in Netflix, and I believe that is. Well, I'll take on the way up. Tesla. Microchip a take on the way up. Uh, huge move. Yeah, huge move on Pan W. Unfortunately, I missed it. Nice move on Marriott. Uh, Tesla right to 754 supply. Uh, FISV take on the way down. Uh, Netflix lows on deck. Again, went down about seven from the pivot. Uh, DLTR from yesterday, right? DLTR uh, 89.64. Uh, earnings low for bills below, right? Multiple day decline, went down to uh, under 88 today. Still looks lower for me. Uh, again, 575, 576 on deck on Netflix, and that's it. So going into tomorrow, again, I'm sell bias. Um, you know, I am sell bias. You know, again, I don't mind being wrong. The market somehow. Uh, starts to reclaim levels, we'll find something to buy. We'll always do. Uh, again, Tesla's still uh, very, very strong. But again, predominantly, I am definitely concentrating on a lot of names that are potentially uh, lost, losing uh, their bottom ranges or daily ranges or already have uh, today. Guys, have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.